Okay, I'm going to do a video of this calculation because it's quite difficult and it's quite common in your leaving cert. So this would have been the calculation that we might have done had we have done the experiment. So calculate the specific latent heat of fusion of ice. Now what that what this actually means is when ice melts, it gets energy from somewhere. It gets heat energy. And the heat energy needed to melt ice is different than the heat energy needed to increase the temperature of water, say from zero degrees to one degrees. And that kind of comes from the latent heat graph. Remember this one? Um, so say uh, this is below zero. So let's just say ice is below zero. Now when it gets to zero, so this is the temperature here. And this is the, uh, the energy added. So as you add energy, now it gets to a point here though, where it stays at zero degrees. Even though you're adding more energy, it stays at zero degrees, and then it'll increase again. So that's, um, that's the latent heat of fusion of ice. The ice is changing from ice to water, but it stays at zero degrees until all of the ice has melted to water. So we're looking to see how much energy does it take to melt one degree or one kilogram of ice. So how many joules? And this is the, so here's the details. So mass of the calorimeter, 56.3 grams. Now the mass of the copper calorimeter in water is 108.5. The initial temperature of the water is 29.5. The final temperature of the water is eight. And the mass of the calorimeter water and ice is 122.9 degrees. Or sorry, the uh, grams, that's grams. Now, one wee thing that I would just automatically recommend you do there is change all those measurements to kilograms. So 0 0.0563 kg, uh, 0 0.1085 kg, and 0 0.1229 kg. And you might see here, if the initial temperature of the water is 29.5 and the final temperature of the water is 8, then there's a temperature loss of 21.5 degrees. So basically, we have warm water and we add ice into it. And what do you think happens? Yeah, the water will cool down and its final temperature will be lower. So calculate the specific latent heat of fusion device. Now, I want you to focus on the green sentence here first. This is the left-hand side of the equation. And basically, if you give me ice, now the ice is all at zero degrees. It's not below zero, it's zero degrees. It takes a certain amount of energy to break the bonds in the ice. So that's the first part of it. The pen, M ice means the mass of the ice. So the more ice you have, the more heat energy will be required to break those bonds. So the energy added to the ice. And then there's a second part. The ice is then changed to water. And then this water has a final temperature of eight degrees, because remember, heat flows from one object to another until they're both the same temperature. So this is, uh, there's two parts to this. There's the amount of energy required to melt ice. Then there's the amount of energy required to take that melted ice up to eight degrees. And this is the calculation. This is the, the amount of heat energy required, depends on the amount of, now this is the, it says the mass of the ice, but then that, that mass, the mass of the ice when it melts just turns to water. So. The amount of water you have multiplied by the specific heat capacity of water multiplied by the temperature change. So you're going from zero to eight degrees, so that's why it's eight. And Cw is the specific heat capacity of water, the amount of energy needed to change one kilogram of water by one degree. Now the right-hand side of the equation, what happens? Well, the copper, the copper calorimeter is warm as well, remember that. So it will lose temperature as well. It, it will lose heat. So if it started off at, so the initial temperature of the water and calorimeter, that should be, and it goes from 29.5 to 8 degrees, so it loses 21.5 degrees of temperature. Now, and the water as well, the water that's there also loses 21.5 degrees. So here we have, uh, so we have the mass of the calorimeter, and then we have the mass of the calorimeter in water. So I can work out the mass of the water there just by simply, um, if I start off, if you had a calorimeter and water is, a, is this many kgs and the calorimeter on its own is that many. So if I just subtract, that will give me the difference. Um, so 0 0.1085, take away 0 0.05633.
So that gives me the mass of water, 0 0.052. One seven. Now the mass of the ice. Well, the mass of the calorimeter water and ice is one hundred and twenty-two point nine grams, and the mass of the calorimeter and water is one hundred and eight point five. So just subtract these two figures, and that gives me the mass of the ice. which is 0 0.0144. And the specific heat capacity of water is 4,180 joules. And in this, you can see we've, we're looking for the latent heat of ice. So um, I've just kept that in red just to show you that, that that's the one we're looking for. And I know everything else, okay? I know what everything else is. So you can just substitute into the formula and rearrange to find um, the mass or the latent heat of ice. So the mass of the ice is, so we'll just substitute now into the formula here. It's 0 Now the latent heat of ice is the is the variable, so that's sorry, that's what we're looking for. So the latent heat of ice, I'll just leave that. Maybe put a circle around it. Plus, now the mass of the ice. Then this uh, this ice. Then sorry, it's zero point zero one four four multiplied by the specific heat capacity of water. That's how much energy is needed. Change one kilo of it, one kilogram of it by one degree equals the mass of the copper. So we have the mass of the copper up here. So that's 0 0.05633 multiplied by the specific heat capacity of copper given to you in the question. Um, the specific heat capacity of copper is um, 380 joules. And you're cha it's losing 21.5 degrees plus, and I've just run out of space here. The mass of the water and its own is, um, so there's the mass of the water, 0 0.05217 multiplied by the specific heat capacity of water, uh, multiplied by the loss, which is 21.5. Now, keep this term on the left-hand side and move all the other terms over on the right-hand side, so I'll tidy this up a bit. So multiplied by the latent heat of ice. Now I'm going to multiply this figure. So 0 0.0144 multiplied by 4180 multiplied by 8. That gives me 481.536. Now multiply this figure. And I get 460. 0.2161. Multiply this out. And I get 4688.51, or say 52. So I'm going to take this across and subtract it. And I'm going to uh, add these two and subtract that. So I'm just going to do all that in the one step just to cut down on the work here. So that gives me 4667.2001. And now I'm going to divide that by 0 0.0144. So that will give me the latent heat of fusion of ice is 324,111, uh, say 0.1 joules. Or you might see it written down, 3.24111 multiplied by, so many times have we moved the decimal point, 1, 2, by 10 to the power of 5 joules per kilogram, per Kelvin. 
and that's the specific latent heat diffusion device. That's the amount of energy you need to use to change or need to add to change one kilogram of ice to water.